Let me just. Okay. Gitesh Bhai, please. Mm -hmm. Yep. Bhadranya Duprant Manstente Tavya Maharata Yeshan Cha Tavan Bhumata Bhutteva Yashashvi Laghom. Kishoji. <clears throat> the great generals who hold you in high esteem will think that you fled from the battlefield out of fear and thus will lose their respect for you. Okay, so the Hindi uh, translation goes as और जिनके लिए तुम बहुत माननीय हो उनके लिए अब तुम तुच्छता को प्राप्त हो जाओगे वे महारती लोग तुम्हें भय के कारण युद्ध से निवृत्त हुआ मानेंगे कमेंट्री गोज एस भावी इतिहास में तो तुम्हारी अब कीर्ति बनी ही रहेगी परंतु वर्तमान में भी शत्रु पक्ष के ये महारथी तुम्हारा उपहास करेंगे इस भ्रातहंता युद्ध से तुम्हें जो दुख है उसे ना समझकर वे यही मानेंगे कि तुमने भय और कायरता के कारण युद्ध से पलायन किया है इस प्रकार का अनादरपूर्ण कायरता का आरोप कोई भी वीर पुरुष सहन नहीं कर सकता विशेषता जब अपने ही तुल्य बल के शत्रु द्वारा रह किया गया हो सो जस्ट टू रिकैप ऑन फ्यू लास्ट फ्यू श्लोका सो दिस चैप्टर टू सांख्य वेयर लॉर्ड श्री कृष्ण इज गिविंग द कोर नॉलेज टू अर्जुना एंड वी स्टार्टेड विद that that lord shri krishna was telling the properties of soul what a soul is and what uh, you know who gets killed soul is a matter of you know it's a pure conscious so it doesn't not get killed it changes the body uh, you know forms as it showed in the picture and then so that was sort of the first um, i would say phase of the the the, the chapter 2 where you know he was trying to elevate Karsh arjuna's knowledge about the killing and the grieving in short because arjuna was worried about okay well i'm going to kill my own family and you know so so lord shri krishna was trying to enlighten arjuna that hey, it is not what you think it is the reality is different so you know soul is not a matter to be destroyed soul is not a matter to be killed and no one gets killed it's just the forms they get changed in short now that's the first part the second part or what we have been discussing in last few shloka was then he talk about bit of metallistic sort of word where you as a kshatriya arjuna was kshatriya born and then his duties um, were to protect the country the society the nation and if he gets away from it then uh, now lord shri krishna is talking about the uh, the hazards the what will come as a consequence if he does so so now coming this is this is the background now coming to this shloka um lord shri krishna says about that if you you know escort from your own duties uh, and uh, renounce them then ultimately you will be subject to you know shame in short so um the history as in you know when we used to was ramayana mahabharat this they used to use this slang a lot that you know itihas is baat ka sakshi rahega itihas matlab they they pretty much very much focus on those days to make a history eventually so um so that's what is said in the shloka that if you get renounced from your own duties what you supposed to do then um you know you will be subject to mockery and that too from your own you know people who uh, not own people the the similar caliber of your competition and that's not advisable in short so <clears throat> all the warriors you know all the same class who you belong on to they will um you know consider you as in as in a runaway uh, that you you know run away from your um your own duties and your respect will go down in short so and i think it's now th this is what uh, <clears throat> is in a context of gita if we if we just compare this in a real life as well in office situation for example right so let's say you have your 10 colleagues and you're working on certain project or something let's say yeah so now if one of them is not doing his job properly <coughs> trying to you know do some work arounds and trying to actually announce his own duty 
as his own duty for that particular job then you know socially among those people they will be a bit of a, oh you know uh, there'll be a bit of a backbiting and they'll be talking about and they do in the office a lot you know that this guy is just you know not good for nothing and all that stuff and this eventually is not good for his own decorum on fame you know own you know in fact even self respect so so i think similar thing is sort of mentioned in this shloka as well that uh, you know doing your own duty is advisable now if at all you think of leaving your own duty um then there are consequences which are uh, not in favor of your own self respect your uh, your fame your dignity your morals and everything so be very careful in uh, in performing your own duty and that's what we i mean if you look at the whole purpose of even reading gita or why we need religion and all this is actually to tell our own duty that what is advisable what we should do not merely the subjects of you know mind body okay i have to you know <clears throat> get married i have to have kids i have to build a house and that's fine that's 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 of course is a part of the duty but there are certain other duties as in way you were born as in what has been given to you what your uh, nature and what your vasanas are so performing duties according to one's own uh, nature is what is advisable and if, if that doesn't happen then then i think uh, people are subject to you know defamation in short so th- this is here um, anyone like to add upon it i'm fine uh, no like fine it's I mean, quite straightforward very good okay let's go to 36 then shake this bye avachya vadan cha bahun dishyanti tavahit nindant satva samarthaya tatyo dukhantar nu kikim tishoji <coughs> your enemies will defame and humiliate you with unknown words this Dis- uh, what dispatch disparging your might also what could be more painful than that so the translation goes in tumhare shatru tumhare samarth ki ninda karte hue bahut se akhatniya vachno ko kahenge fir usse adhik dukh kya hoga yah dekhkar arjun ke man mein in tarko ka anukul prabhav pad raha hai shri krishna usko yuddh se palayan karne mein jo dosh hai unhe aur adhik spash karke dikhate hain lok ninda yuddh se palayan karne ka aarop इतिहास में अब कीर्ति इससे बढ़कर एक सम्मानित व्यक्ति के लिए और अधिक क्या दुख होगा सो अगेन स्मॉल एक्सप्लेनेशन एंड कंटिन्यूएशन फॉर द लास्ट श्लोक दैट लॉर्ड श्री कृष्ण इज टेलिंग अर्जुन द कॉन्सिक्वेंसेज ऑफ ए फी यू नो एंड आई थिंक दिस अप्लाइज इन शॉर्ट इन आर लाइफ एज वेल दैट जस्ट टेक एन एग्जाम्पल समन इज स्ट्रगलिंग टू स्टडी इन एग्जाम्स और समथिंग एंड and he decided to quit right so that i mean his duty as a student is not bringing him any fame in fact it's you know the society and other people and all it's 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 not advisable in short so if we compare to our life right of whatever path you are on and and i generally like um big 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 proctor of this thing you want to do something in life stick to it because there're going to be challenges right and now um the challenges will make you quit but you know the winning is actually done by how many failures you can perceive and take there is actually i would recommend you to watch uh, it, actually it's on youtube i'll share uh, rocky bolboa is a little speech from him a motivational speech from him when his son was rocky bolboa or uh, silvester stallone right so there's a new movie came out like a couple of years back uh, the the new rocky origin and his son was there and his son was actually coming out of the office and he was frustrated and all this and that and he said i want to give up my job and everything so rocky actually acted as lord, what exactly what lord krishna is doing here and he gave a little speech and i share that with you it was a very impressive speech he says that you know do you think that word and life is easy and everything is you know is not that the case you know people are mean life is mean uh, word is mean 
and they will keep you put down if you don't get up they will keep you pushing down now it's up to you what you want to do now um and and he mentioned it at some stage that you know the, the victory is all about you know how many failures you can take and take and come back and take and come back so and that's sort of if i there is a correlation here between the two that um for and for antrim arjun was you know a bit down and depressed and and what lord shri krishna was trying to motivate him that follow the path you are upon do not leave it because when you leave there are dangerous consequences about it um and and we actually you know what in our life as well we need someone like a, a friend a motivator <clears throat> a guide at times you know we we might come to challenges in our professional life and education and everything so so this concept applied pretty much practically that you know you are sought to something and you know challenges are expected failures are expected that does not mean that you know you quit and you continue that journey and at the end of the tunnel there is always light so so yeah if if we relate that to our life it's um, i can see quite good uh, correlation in this particular shloka they're saying like you know if you quit then your competition will laugh at you what could be more uh, you know defameful and you know painful eventually and you know, it's quite mean things you have to go through especially from people who you can compete with so they will laugh at you that's not good so that's what it says <clears throat> um anyone like to add on anything okay 37 then um gitesh bhai hato va pravasiya swarg jitwa va moksha ase mahim tasma tasma drushti kontae yudhyay krati nischay ishon ji you fight you will either be slain on the uh, battlefield and go to the uh, celestial abodes or you will gain victory and enjoy the kingdom on earth therefore arise with determination o son of kunti and be prepared to fight so the translation goes yuddh mein mar kar tum swarg prapt karoge ya jeet kar prithvi ko bhogoge isliye hai kaun ta yuddh ka nishchay kar tum khade ho jao एक्सप्लेनेशन इज इस युद्ध में अर्जुन का पक्ष धर्म का होने से युद्ध करना उसके लिए सभी दृष्टियों से उचित था युद्ध में मृत्यु होने पर उस वीर को स्वर्ग की प्राप्ति होगी और विजय होने पर वह पृथ्वी का राज वैभव होगा मृत्युपराण धर्म के लिए युद्ध करने वाले पराक्रमी शूरवीर की भांति भी स्वर्ग का सुख भोगेगा इसीलिए अब तक जितने भी तर्क दिए गए हैं उनका निष्कर्ष एक वाक्य में यह है कि युद्ध का निश्चय कर तुम खड़े हो जाओ जिस परिस्थिति विशेष में गीता का उपदेश दिया गया है उसके संदर्भ में युद्ध करने की सलाह न्यायोचित है परंतु सामान्य परिस्थितियों में भी श्री कृष्ण के इस दिव्य आह्वान का अर्थ होगा कि सभी प्रकार की मानसिक दुर्बलताओं को त्याग कर मनुष्य को अपने जीवन में आने वाले संघर्षो की चुनौतियों का सामना साहस और दृढ़ता के साथ विजय के लिए करना चाहिए इस प्रकार गीता का उपदेश किसी व्यक्ति विशेष के लिए ना होकर संपूर्ण विश्व की मानव जाति के लिए उपयोगी और कल्याणकारी सिद्ध होगा जिस भाव से दस करके युद्ध करना चाहिए अब यह सुनो सो आई थिंक एज आई वॉज सॉर्ट ऑफ कंपेयरिंग इन लास्ट फ्यू श्लोक प्रोबली वॉट इज इन हेयर इन शॉर्ट लॉर्ड श्री कृष्णा से मीन इफ यू टेक हिज डिवाइन टीचिंग और वॉट इज इज क्लियर मैसेज टू द मैन काइंड इज that you know a konte yuddh ka nishchay kar tum khade ho jao means you know decide to fight and war you know have a decisive mind and get into the war now <clears throat> and and this is you know at times if we feel down in a life we should have this sort of enter at least by now we should start feeling or hearing the noise of our own atma and our own atma always tells us the right thing to do uh, my dad used to say that all all atma always tell the right path but it's our man and buddhi we you know at times we just you know don't listen to the voice so if we listen to the voice of our atma they'll, they'll tell us actually the right thing to do and and in any sequence uh, and any challenge of your life you know i think your atma should uh, uh you know respond as in what lord shri krishna is saying that uh, go and fight and at times it happens right we have few voices coming out our head you know different voices saying different things 
um, if we take this as a lesson that, you know, in the challenges of life, um, the teaching of Lord Krishna is, is that leave all the, you know, uh, mental weaknesses which you may incur and then get ready for the fight. And fight in our life is, is the challenges of the life because you're going to face them um, eventually. And that's, by the way, is the whole purpose of, you know, we doing these exercises uh, is a more of, you know, life lessons which we can uh, incorporate in our daily life. We do feel challenged uh, and there are plenty, especially the Indian diaspora who lives uh, outside the country where we have lack of family, relatives and also there's a lot on us. So I think the key is, is that we, um, uh, we be motivated and to our duties and whenever there are challenges rather than skipping uh, them or escaping from them, uh, you know, we fight with them and and eventually you will win i mean i think uh, we i'd like to share here we have gitej bhai is a true example here um he'd been trying to move to certain and uh, last few months been quite a uh, uh quite a tough journey for him because his daughter they live in Hounslow, west london and you know she had to travel all the way to, to certain which is quite a quite a quite a ride i mean three four hours of her life daily life goes away with the travel so a lot of struggle and they've been struggling a lot um, to find the house, there's a lot of challenges uh, because it was not easy to buy that area house and everything is going up after Brexit and COVID and everything. So, but finally, I mean, he was persisted and he was, you know, going through, going through, and finally he managed to secure and, you know, um, hopefully very soon he'll be moving. So, congratulations on that. But the message is is clearly the same that you know you're gonna incur the the, the challenges of life, but as long as you persist, that's that's, that's very, very important. So, so well done, Gitae Bhai, on that. So I think this, uh, and i like to you guys to uh, sort of talk about a bit about maybe, uh, you know, some challenges you might incurred and then you have stick to your principles and, and fight it through them. And that would be great. I'll just explain Gitej Bhai's one. But this is pretty much what the shloka translates into. Yeah, I mean, I think... In any situation, it's not just this. Uh, any situation, if you are going through uh, uh, going through with something in your life, then if you fight, 99% chance are that you will, you know, uh, find the victory. You will succeed. It just somehow you have to find that courage, braveness to fight. That's the main thing. Because most of the time, as one or two setbacks you get, you just given up or you quit. So this is what this sloka is saying, like, just keep going, have faith on yourself. Even if you are getting setback, just continue the fight and ultimately you will re reach your goal. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. Great. Um, great. Thank you, Gideshba. Anyone else wants to add something? No. Okay. By the way, uh, you were to send some... Uh, are you going to send the link for the YouTube? You said, uh, yeah, yeah. Page. After the session, I'll send over the okay, chat okay. in the group. Just, thank you. Yeah. Right. So let's move to 38 then. Yes, please. Yeah. Sukha dukhe samme kratva labha labho jaya jayo tatyo yudhyay Yujyasva neva apam vapyasi yasi. Fight for the sake of duty, treating alike happiness and distress, loss and gain, victory and defeat. Fulfilling your responsibility in this way, you will never incur sin. संकेत दिया गया है यह प्रथम अवसर है कि श्री कृष्ण इस श्लोक में आत्मोन्नति की साधना का स्पष्ट रूप से वर्णन करते हैं इसके लिए इसका सावधानी पूर्वक अध्ययन गीता गीता के समस्त साधकों के लिए अत्यंत उपयोगी सिद्ध होगा शरीर मन और बुद्धि इन तीन अध्यायों के माध्यम से हम जीवन के विभिन्न अनुभव प्राप्त कर सकते हैं इन तीन स्तरों पर प्राप्त होने वाली सभी लॉन्ग एक्सप्लेनेशन है 
इन तीन स्तरों पर सो शरीर मैं रिपीट अगेन शरीर मन और बुद्धि इन तीन उपाधियों के माध्यम से हम जीवन में विभिन्न अनुभव प्राप्त कर सकते हैं इन तीन स्तरों पर प्राप्त होने वाले सभी अनुभवों का समावेश इस श्लोक में कथित तीन प्रकार के द्वंदों में किया गया है अनुकूल और प्रतिकूल परिस्थितियों को सुख और दुख के रूप में अनुभव करना बुद्धि की प्रतिक्रिया है लाभ और हानि ये मन की कल्पनाएं हैं जिस वस्त, जिस कारण वस्तु की प्राप्ति पर हर्ष और वियोग पर शोक करना होना स्वाभाविक है भौतिक जगत की उपलब्धियों को यहाँ जय पराजय शब्द से सूचित किया गया है श्री कृष्ण का संदेश यह है कि मनुष्य को इस प्रकार के विषम परिस्थितियों में सदैव मन का संतुलन बनाए रखना चाहिए इसके लिए सतत जागरूकता की आवश्यकता है समुद्र स्नान के इच्छुक व्यक्ति को समुद्र स्नान करने की कला ज्ञात होनी चाहिए अथवा समुद्र की उत्तंग तरंगे उस व्यक्ति को व्यस्थित कर देंगी और उसे जल समाधि में खींच ले जाएंगी पर, परंतु बड़ी लहरों के नीचे झुकने और छोटी लहरों पर सवार होने की कला जो व्यक्ति जानता है वही समुद्र स्नान का आनंद उठा सकता है यह आशा है कि समुद्र की लहरें शांत हो जाएं अथवा स्नान के समय कष्ट ना पहुंचाए अपनी सुविधा के लिए समुद्र को उसके स्वरूप का त्याग करने के आदेश देने के समान है किंतु अज्ञानी पुरुष जीवन में यही चाहता है कि किसी प्रकार समस्या उसके सामने ना आए जो सर्वथा असंभव है जीवन के समुद्र में सुख दुख लाभ हानि और जया पराजय की लहरें उठना अनिवार्य है अन्यथा पूर्ण गतिहीनता ही मृत्यु है यह जीवन का स्वरूप है कि एक उफनते तूफानी यह यदि जीवन का स्वरूप ही एक उफनते तूफानी समुद्र के समान है तो उसमें उठती उतंग तरंगों के आघातों अथवा गहन ग्रहों से विचलित हुए बिना जीवन जीने की कला हमें सीखनी चाहिए इन उठती हुई तरंगों में किसी एक के साथ तादाद में स्थापित कर लेना मानो समुद्र की सतह पर उसके साथ इधर उधर बहते रहना है और ना कि उस प्रकाश के स्तंभ के समान स्थिर रहना है जो जो वही विशुद्ध लहरों के बीच निश्चल खड़ा रहता है और जिसकी नींव समुद्र के तल की चट्टान पर निर्मित होती है भगवान श्री कृष्ण अर्जुन को युद्ध करने के लिए प्रेरित करते हैं किंतु साथ में समत भाव का आदेश भी देते हैं अन्यथा कर्म में प्रवृत्त हुआ व्यक्ति अनेक अवसरों पर अपनी ही नकारात्मक प्रवृत्तियों का शिकार बन जाता है मन के इस संभाव होने पर ही मनुष्य वास्तविक सुफूर्ति और प्रेरणा का जीवन जी सकता है और ऐसे व्यक्ति की उपलब्धियां ही सच्ची सफलता की ताबा से युक्त होती हैं यह सुविध तत्व है कि सभी कार्य क्षेत्रों में जो कर्म सुफूर्ति और प्रेरणा युक्त होते हैं उनकी अपनी ही एक दैवीय चमक होती है जिनकी ना की प्रतिकृति हो सकती है और ना ही उसे बारंबार दोहराया जा सकता है किसी भी कार्य क्षेत्र का व्यक्ति चाहे वह कवि या कलाकार या चिकित्सक हो या व्यक्ता जब अपनी सर्वश्रेष्ठ उपलब्धि या कृति प्रस्तुत करता है तो वह सर्वसम्मति से प्रेरणा का कार्य ही स्वीकार किया जा सकता है इस प्रकार हम जब देवी प्रेरणा के आनंद से अभिभूत होकर कोई कार्य कर रहे होते हैं तब हमारी कल्पना विचार और कर्म अपनी ही निरालती निराली सुंदरता से ओतप्रोत होती है जिन्हें इस यंत्र के समान पुनः दोहराया नहीं जा सकता प्रसिद्ध चित्रकार दिंसी अपनी श्रेष्ठकृति मन स्मृति वदना मोनोलिसा का चित्र दोबारा चित्रित नहीं कर सकता महाकवि कीट्स की लेखनी उड़ते हुए बुलबुल के गान को दूसरी बार नहीं लिख पाई बीथोवन पियानो पर फिर एक बार वही मधुर स्वर झंकृत नहीं कर सकता भगवान श्री कृष्ण ने भी अर्जुन को प्रार्थना कर अर्जुन के प्रार्थना करने पर युद्ध के पश्चात दोबारा गीता सुनाने में अपनी असमर्था स्वीकार की पाश्चात्य विचारकों के लिए प्रेरणा संयोग की कोई रहस्यमय घटना है जिस पर मानव का कोई नियंत्रण नहीं रहता जबकि भारतीय मनीषियों के अनुसार देवी प्रेरणा का जीवन मनुष्य का वास्तविक लक्ष्य है जिसे वह अपने आत्मस्वरूप के साथ पूर्णतया स्थापित करके जी सकता है समत्व भाव का वह जीवन जहां हम जीवन में आने वाली परिस्थितियों से अप्रभावित अपने मन और बुद्धि को साक्षी बनाकर रहते हैं अहंकार की विस्मृति के लक्षण हैं और तब हमारे कर्म पूछकाल की जगमगाती आभा से स्मृत होते हैं 
सामान्य मनुष्य की ये धारणा होती है कि अहंकार के अभाव में हम कार्य करने में अकुशल या असमर्थ बन जाएंगे परंतु यह मिथ्या की धारणा है प्रेरणा की आभा ही सामान्य सफलता को महान उपलब्धि की चाहिए तक पहुंचा सकती है प्राचीन हिंदू योगियों ने एक साधना का आविष्कार किया जिसके अभ्यास से मन और बुद्धि युक्तता एवं समता संपादित की जा सकती है इस साधना को योग कहते हैं वैदिक काल के लोगों को इसका ज्ञान था और इसका अभ्यास करने करके वे योगी का जीवन जीते थे उन्होंने असाधारण उपलब्धियों को अर्जित करके राष्ट्र के लिए स्वर्ण युग का निर्माण किया था पेज भारत जैसे वैदिक काल में निश्चित ही आस्तिक दर्श, दर्शन प्रचलित होगा परंतु उसकी उपयोगिता जीवन के विशेष क्षेत्रों में सभी क्षेत्रों में समान रूप से है यदि उसकी सार्वक्षेत्रीय उपयोगिता ना हो तो वास्तविक अर्थ में दर्शन ही नहीं है अधिक से अधिक उस किसी शेष पुरुष का जीवन विषय मत माना जा सकता है जिसका सीमित उपयोग हो किंतु तत्व ज्ञान के रूप में वह कभी स्वीकार नहीं हो सकता अब तक के उपदेश में भगवान ने वे सभी आवश्यक तर्क अनुज के समक्ष प्रस्तुत किए हैं जिनको समझकर प्राप्त परिस्थितियों में स्वबुद्धि से उचित निर्णय लेने में वह सबक समर्थ हो सके सभी भौतिक परिस्थितियों से के मूल्यांकन में केवल आध्यात्मिक दृष्टिकोण से ही अंतिम प्रमाण नहीं माना जा सकता जीवन की प्रत्येक परिस्थितियां चुनौती का मूल्यांकन आध्यात्मिक दृष्टि के साथ साथ बुद्धि के स्तर पर तर्क मन और मन के स्तर पर नैतिकता और भौतिक स्तर पर परंपरा और राज सामाजिक रीति रिवाज की दृष्टि से करना आवश्यक है इन सबके द्वारा बिना किसी विरोधाभास के यदि एक किसी एक सत्य का संकेत मिलता है तो निश्चय ही वह दिव्य मार्ग है जिस पर मनुष्य प्रत्येक मूल्य पर चलने का प्रयत्न करना चाहिए केवल नैतिकता का आ, की भावना से युद्ध की ओर देखने से अर्जुन इस परिस्थिति को उचित रूप से समझ नहीं सका शत्रु पक्ष में खड़े अपने ही बंधु बांधवों को विनिष्ट करना नैतिकता के विरुद्ध था किंतु भावावेश जनित मन की भ्रमित अवस्था में उसने अन्य दृष्टिकोणों पर विचार नहीं किया जिससे वह पुनः संयमित हो सकता था ऐसे अवसर में जो करने योग है वह कर, वही करता हुआ अर्जुन भगवान श्री कृष्ण की शरण में जाता है श्री कृष्ण उसके मार्गदर्शन का उत्तरदायित्व अपने ऊपर लेकर जीवन में सभी दृष्टिकोण को उसके सामने प्रस्तुत करते हैं संपूर्ण गीता में श्री कृष्ण मनुष्य को विवेकशील बुद्धि की भूमिका निभाते हैं और कठोपनिषद की भाषा में देह रूपी रथ का जो कि कठोपनिषद की भाषा में देह रूपी यथ का योग्य सारती है इस प्रकार आध्यात्मिक भौतिक नैतिक और पारंपरिक दृष्टियों से विचार करने के पश्चात पूर्व के श्लोक में भगवान अर्जुन को युद्ध करने की सम्मति देते हैं जिस भावना से कर्म करना चाहिए उसका विवेचन इस श्लोक में अर्जुन ने किया है शरीर आदि अनात्म उपाधियों के साथ तदात्म करने से जो चिंताएं विक्षेप और व्याकुलता होते हैं उनसे ऊपर उठकर विषम परिस्थितियों में संभाव में स्थित होकर हमें कर्म करना चाहिए मन के समत्व भाव रहने से जीवन की वास्तविक सफलता निश्चित होती है इसके पूर्व हम देख चुके हैं कि जीवन किस प्रकार पूर्व संचित वासना क्षीण हो जाती है जगत में सभी जीव अपनी अपनी वासनाओं का क्षय करने के लिए विभिन्न शरीर धारण किए हुए हैं इस प्रकार वश वृक्ष पशु अथवा मनुष्य सभी वासनाओं के भंडार हैं सब परिस्थितियों में संभाव में स्थित हुआ मन वासनाओं का निस्सारण मार्ग बनता है यह द्वार जब अहंकार और स्वास्थ्य स्वास्थ्य स्वार्थ से अवरुद्ध होता है तब वासना शय के स्थान पर असंख्य नई वासनाएं उत्पन्न हो जाती हैं द्वंद्व के कारण हुआ विक्षेप अहंकार और के जन्म और वृद्धि के कारण है कर्मयोग की भावना से कर्म करते हुए जीवन जीने पर अंतकरण की शुद्धि होती है इस कर्मयोग का विस्तृत विवेचन गीता की तृतीय अध्याय में किया गया है तत्व ज्ञान और सामान्य जन की दृष्टि से विचार करने के पश्चात भगवान अर्जुन को कर्मयोग की भावना से युद्ध करने का उपदेश देते हैं तत्व ज्ञान को समझकर उसे जीवन में उसे जीवन में जीना ही व्यवहारिक धर्म है इसके पश्चात इस अध्याय में वेदांत का ज्ञान वेदांत ज्ञान का व्यवहार में उपयोग करने के उपायों और साधनों का निरूपण किया गया है भगवान कहते हैं आगे लॉट हार्ड टू रिवन कॉल सो 
in short um the few key things uh, which uh, are discussed in this shloka so uh, if i um uh, just go through the little translation of it so i think in this shloka in previous shloka he was lord shri krishna was talking about telling the arjuna that you know leave all the you know, weaknesses of mind and get ready for the fight and everything this shloka sort of talks about more that what sort of mental equilibrium you have to maintain um and fight so and this is important um from the aspect of when you have the sort of equilibrium which is whether i will win or whether i will lose of course lord krishna told him about the consequences of if he do not fight right what will happen so he says fight but when you fight then at least have this type of equilibrium because we discussed in previous shlokas that when you have this worry of you know the results that dissipates your energy forget all that have a mental equilibrium and then do your war which is your duty so what lord shri krishna tells about here is that in fact for us as well <clears throat> the the karm yog keep on saying that karm yog ki bhavna se kartavya karte hue jeevan jeene ki hi kala jo hai the karm yog is well will have a dedicated chapter actually <clears throat> this is sankhya yoga then we'll have um, karm yoga so and we'll know more about it what is actually karm yoga um, and we'll go quite deep into it but in short <clears throat> karm yoga defines is a science which defines when you do any act how do you use this yoga to do nishkam karms nishkam karms means the karm which for which you do not get attached by the results because anything you do right positive or negative it is going to have results and getting detached with the results is and making it nishkam karm is what is actually karma yoga means now how do we do that that we we'll learn in the karma yoga further on but what is advisable here is is that you have to fight you have to do your duties you have to do what you need to do in this life and do it with a karma yoga feeling so that you know you don't get attached with the results and also have a equilibrium of the mind um being it victory or loss um and and do it now there was a very good simile which was given in this uh, shloka that you know in our life we will have this that <clears throat> you will have waves uh, you will have high tides low tides someone who have to ride on the sea he needs to know the art of riding the sea and that's what we try to learn here in the gita that what are the tips and techniques to do so because um eventually you know a successful person is who is able to manage things even in corporate world right you do see a lot of things plus and minus and there then so, so a successful person will some is someone who will uh who can actually articulate things who can manage things well and that's what we have to learn like you know how to live in this life um like lotus flower or lotus uh, you know uh, leaf where the water falls on it but it doesn't get attached to it and it it moves away things like that so um quite a detailed uh, explanation but the crux is what we just said um the other thing i think which they mentioned about was that there is various levels you have to qualify something you know like um or in short if i would say in a generic terms right ki you want to make a decision for example in your life now man will say something buddhi will say something there are various pros and cons and everything so the simplest way to do is is just cheese ko and this is also it has said here in various levels you qualify that decision that's it so just cheese ko you know man स्वीकृति जिस चीज के लिए मन रेडी होता है और जिसको आपकी आ, आपकी बुद्धि जो है उससे स्वीकृत होती है उसको आज्ञा देती है अलाइनमेंट में है दैट इज द राइट डिसीजन 
to take upon. And then also they mention that you have to look into various aspects as well, other aspects ki. And that I think that, in short, if I read this again, that the life of every person or the world of the world is with the Buddha, 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 the Uh, because I will really enjoy doing it fine. Then at the buddhi level, uh, it basically uh, checks about that logically, whether is it the right thing to do. Last time I did it and I had bad results out of it. So then buddhi should, should say that, you know, this is not the right thing to do. So something what your man wants to do, but buddhi agrees with it, right? That's two checks you have done. The third check one is, is that, you know, at a physical level, you check around that, from the cultural, from the Samaj, Parampara, everything, does it fit? Uh, is it not going to be awkward? Uh, then you make that decision. And that would be the right thing to do. So uh, if in all the three places, the checks are there, eventually, you know, it, it's a good decision-making process. And we all know that how hard is decision-making process. So in short, um, they're telling us the, the keys to making decisions, which is uh, do check in three levels. Yeah. So at one level, which is the liking part, how you know you, you want to do, and pretty much the decision starts from the man itself. Oh, okay, uh, it's, it's hot. I want to eat ice cream. Simple. So man will say that I want to eat ice cream. Fine. That is man saying, uh, oh, look at the ice cream. It looks amazing. I want to eat it. But they will say, well, last time this, this weather, I had the ice cream. And I fall ill. So that the logical discrimination will happen at the buddhi level and you know apply the buddhi. So do the checks. Don't only make a decision because man said it and you want to have it. No. Make sure you had another check. What does buddhi say? Okay, buddhi says, yeah, maybe this is this is right, this is wrong. And then have a third check, which is what happens with the society around life. You know, uh, let's say uh, it's Is it, is it advisable? Is it the right thing to do? Like, for example, in few countries, it's not good to eat food outside completely. Like in Japan, they don't eat and walk straight on the street and eat food. They have to have some places. Even you take a takeaway, you stand somewhere and turn your back around and then, you know, you eat the food. So so in wherever time frame you are in, uh, how does it fit into that culture? Whatever you're trying to do, uh, I think, because ultimately people will judge you on what you did. And if you're quite awkward, then the decision will not be in, in your favor. So three things, if we check upon in general in life, I think these are easy things. Um, these are easy ways to measure. And these will aid us to, uh, you know, make the, the life decisions in a much better way. Um, in short, so quite a quite lot is covered actually in this. They've given various examples. So, and other thing I think they said about was the prana. The, you know, when you do something with that energy um and unfortunately in the office work we may not see much because you know we get paid for it and then we have some job to do and we do the job and all but something which you're really inspired of right when you do that and and when you do it with uh, with that glow you know that uh, spiritual glow that is the, the, the real deal actually and that cannot be replicated so You know, they given a lot of examples about the, the Mona Lisa painting and it's primarily, you know, visible in the fields of art and music because they are pretty much filled with that spiritual glow. And uh, the idea is, is that, um, you know, have that side of uh, glow in your work. Um, and um, uh, this is what is actually classified as, as you, we will learn more about the work and the karma yoga and then how to bring that glow in further on chapters but uh, yeah so um i'm not covered here um any, i know it's 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 a lot in this <laughs> anyone like to add anything on it uh, i think there was fourth element they say netikta yeah so adhyatmic well actually... adhyatmic and samajik is like society and uh, religious 
वॉर I mean, before making that decision, he should have thought of all this. Yeah, like, so it's good for humankind, mankind, basically. Uh, Nat, it's good. Of, good is one thing, but nathik that means I mean, how ethical it is. That's what it is. Yes, which is what ethical. How you define ethical, which is good for mankind, isn't it? That the, is ethical. Yes, ethical is something which is good for mankind. In short, yeah. I mean, that falls under the principles. You know, the 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 uh, because for the human beings or. i would say rather man can maybe is bigger is it is it beneficial for the society yeah because society have certain rules let's say and it's bind it abide by those rules and no, that is what society might be just like a you know a small group of people where is naitikta i think because they saying society as well as naitikta they say like you know samajik samajik is society isn't it mm-hmm. yeah yeah So they say. I think saying, there is a subtle difference between ethic. That maybe somebody else can elaborate a bit more. What is anybody wanna elaborate the difference between ethic and samajik? Hello. Yeah. yeah. Mm. No, it is fine. No, I don't know. Manatikta so, is like ethic, isn't it? That's what. Uh, yeah, Manatikta yeah. yeah. is ethos actually. Mm. And um, so, actually, let me repeat this again. What they say is, जीवन की प्रत्येक परिस्थितियों या चुनौतियों का मूल्यांकन आध्यात्मिक दृष्टि के साथ साथ. So one is आध्यात्मिक दृष्टि, which is how do you, what is your spiritual look out to that? Yes. Second is बुद्धि के स्तर पर तर्क. so yeah. at the uh, intellect level is the logics man yeah. ke star par naitikta yeah to man ke star par naitikta hai means ki you know your man wants to do it but how ethical it is mm. the third one is bhautik star par parampara aur samajik mm. riti rivaj that is society and all both yeah so the third one actually there are three so the third level is is the bhautik level which is the physical mm. level which is parampara and samajik riti rivaj that is all one club one together so naitikta is separated naitikta is separated at the <coughs> which is why i said it's the fourth one yeah uh, it's actually the third one or actually yes yeah, third the fourth, and fourth. Yeah. first is yes. your mind <coughs> second is your man third is your naitikta and fourth is your uh, society parampara uh, no no actually gidesh bhai the third the man is the element of naitikta okay so what exactly they trying to say this bit confused so, there yeah so no not exactly it is it is let me go back in here so it is so let's put it this way. any decision has to be made or checked at few levels right one level they said at a spiritual level that's actually bit separate because you know you can't make all the decisions at spiritual level you know spiritual yes. level is completely let's say separate then considering our own architecture there are few levels you check up on so one is buddhi level which is the logics so buddhi ke level yeah, ke tar, intellect yeah. you know so buddhi is intellect and intellect checks on the logics whether i should eat, mm. eat the ice cream Do, or not depending yeah? on your past experience yeah based on the past experience exactly so because buddhi store the experience and it'll tell you you did it last year and you fall in right mm. so it'll tell you yes or no now that is the buddhi on the tark and then second is is the man ke star par naitikta so man is your mind now man ke star par naitikta so naitikta has to be judged on the man and naitikta is the ethos so now you want to do something but is it ethical and hmm. i think probably they have bonded it to them at a man level that uh, your hmm. man wants to do it whether it's ethical or not yeah like you want to steal something so your Correct. money is saying yeah it's good for you steal it but is it ethical is it ethical exactly on the at a man level itself you know mera man kar raha hai mai yeah exactly that's what i mean but i like that thing so i want yeah. to steal it 
exactly uh, so but that you have to decide on your metikta level and then and i think it's right thing to say that if you bind the natikta ethos on to the man level a lot of problems will be solved by itself because it's the man who is very unethical actually it's big, basically your ego and all those things comes under this category i suppose right. so because man is see if you remember architecture our indriya they connect to the man directly what we hmm. see touch whatever then we feel and man is the one which gets deviated the most now i think yes. put the man in the control is where you where your ethos comes in you know that you control the man with the ethos that oh this is not right thing to do by the way yes like that right so i think they are right there saying and then the third one is is the bhautik level the physical level which is parampara and samaj riti uh, rivaj yes. so parampara and samaj samajik and all that all they accustomed in one yeah society tradition culture right. yeah. correct so whatever you do has to be good for has society to be good for others yeah and it is following whatever cultures and tradition you're not going against them against them correct so now in sab ke dwara bina kisi virodhabhas ke yadi ek satya ka sanket milta hai to nischay hi vah divya marg hai so i think th- this is the thing like so whenever you want to find a decision or a path so you know again various qualifiers if you check them on various qualifiers and i think there's a very good decision making process there that you check at man level whether it's ethical or not what are you want to do right because man i think man should come first because you know you want to do something your man kar raha hai karne ka you know mm-hmm. and check whether it's ethical or not then second is check with the buddhi separately you know what is the logical explanation of doing it why i should do this or why i shouldn't do this that's logical and to check man you have to go through ethos and principles basically ethos and principles correct the first check is on the ethos and principles through the man the second check is the logics and the rationals through the mind which is based on the previous experiences and the third check is is at the natik level which is the the physical stare ki uh i'm sorry no 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 i'm confusing you sorry my bad no third is a society is the society, and, society and the samajik parampara yeah. so bhautik star is the physical level what are we trying to do how does it i think this is where your society comes in. affects your society culture and tradition exactly like the society or even you can go bit broader affects humanity in general like you know like for example putin could have make a decision like this that okay point number 1 uh, i want to do it is it ethical I want, to, i want to put up a war is it ethical then it should come an answer well it doesn't seems to be ethical you're going to be killing babies okay then second is uh, is a logical level whether how logical it is you know you should have the answer that in terms of arms and ammunitions and everything and and the power and the nato and everything you know there, there has to be a uh, few logical explanations which 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 may have gone then third one is the is at the at the uh, bhautik level which is uh, how does humanity in general will get impact with this and suffer and suffer and, and, and exactly so so then now out of all these three if you go through these three and you get an answer and that's what is mentioned here that you know if you um, it's very important actually in uh, the line said in sab ke dwara bina kisi virodhabhas ke yadi ek satya ka sanket milta that's a decision making process so you yes, check it on then go for it yeah exactly so if you see that oh, okay this seems to be like a you know divine glow in it and that's the right path you know that is the right path so it's very very important learning because you know we uh, we generally are very weak in decision making decision making is very hard very very hard so now i think here they 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 told us a key concept that how that decision making of you know in these three areas if you qualify if you check a decision um then you know um and i think that's how the most of the corporates they do right they make the decision like that only that you know um eventually what is a decision making process put the facts together right so they they don't look at the man level well they they do they check that whether is ethical so even the corporate conduct first thing they do is whether it's ethical right then second is they go put the facts together which is mine so uh, yeah. uh, in order to make a decision they have to have plenty of facts so you go through a lot of facts and then that's where the mind comes into play the intellect that okay what is the logical explanation of why i should do this and why i shouldn't do this so that's that second then the third one is what they do check is the social responsibility whatever they do 
if they have to lay off the people, <coughs> you know, that decision also needs to have. So I think, you know, uh, th these three things, and if you cover yourself with these three things for any decisions, then you will have explanation. Yep. Very, very good uh, learning, actually. And Gita, you were very well pointed out. You know, this uh, this can actually this solve a lot of problems in our life. This will definitely help us, you know, in our real life as well too. Like whenever we are in like in in indecision time where whether we should go for it or not, then we can just evaluate our, you know, everything on these three points. And if you get the answer yes for all those three points, then you it will help you to make, uh, you know, decision, your decision very easy. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, that, that's correct. And especially with the, you know, like something like to do with So Home and all, if if you have to do something, then I think these things are very important to consider, especially the social responsibility part that, that because, because once you check all this, then, you know, you're covered and the decision you'll make will be the right one. And I would like to say here, I'm not sure if it's right saying though, but what Hitler used to say about decision is, I make a decision first and then I make it right. Mm. It's, you know, because there's nothing called as a right decision, put it this way, I think. So you got to you gotta qualify, thing. as long as you have done your groundwork, right, to make a decision and you qualified in various levels, as mentioned in Gita, then, and, and plus, if you don't find any, what they haven't told us is, what if, if you find any Virodhavas? They're saying, when you qualify these things and you have, a viro, you don't have any virodhabhas means there is in any of these three qualifiers you don't find anything which is conflicting then you make a decision then you take a decision but what if you find something conflicting if you find something conflicting which means that there is something wrong either you satisfy that conflict or don't make that decision you know so so maybe in our life as well we should qualify and do not be too quick into decision making as well because this is if you're too quick then you'll make mistakes if you qualify this in three areas I personally think you can make better decisions and you have a lot of logics and rationales. It, so eventually what you need is you need ethos, you need rationals and you need society and cultural and, you know, values to support a decision and you will end up in the right decision. Mm -hmm. Good learning. Very good. Okay. I think um, that's all for today. Anyone else wants to add on something? But not add, but I got a quick query actually. Sure. You read earlier quite a bit of uh, Hindi, uh, and uh, Kishorji, you are coming very, you know, not very clear. I mean, your okay, okay. volume is looks like very, okay, very okay. Let's see. Uh, uh, okay. Can you hear me now? We can hear you, but not very loudly. Oh, what do I need to do? I don't know. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, continue. That's fine. Okay, okay. Uh, you can uh, fix okay. that thing afterwards. Uh, no, uh, uh, you read quite a bit uh, in uh, 